Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we're going to be picking up where we left off in part one and in today's part two we're going to go ahead and be adding in our engine and propellers to the submarine itself. Uh, we go ahead and wire that all up and pipe it and then hopefully we should be able to get the submarine moving uh, for the first time. In the next video we should be able to cover the um, addition of the fins uh, towards the back or the control surfaces and then we should be able to also get into a little bit of detailing in part three but for part two now we'll go ahead and get started so we've come across to the workbench here on the creative island and harbor area uh, we've loaded up the sub that we were working on in part one uh, as you can see here, I have done a couple additions to the sub in the meantime. Uh, what I've done now, I've just pretty much gone ahead and smoothed it all out. Just using the wedge blocks along the sides. Along with that, I've also just used our inverse pyramids just to get a little bit more of that rounded shape. Uh, and you can see that quite evidently in the front here, just by using our inverse pyramids and also our pyramids. Just going along there until I got it to the shape that I liked. Along with that, uh, between the video, what I did is I went ahead and just fixed the ballast system a little bit. Uh, pretty much by doing that, um, I just did is shorten this one here, so this tank towards the rear, because obviously last time the rear was sinking too much. Went ahead and shortened that, uh, and then towards the front, all I've done is I've just added a couple more weights. That means the front is a little bit heavier. The back is a little bit lighter, which is going to be great, because obviously when we add our engines, our propellers, uh, our fin rudders, slash control surfaces it's going to get a little more heavier towards the rear which is going to be perfect now with that said we'll go ahead and get started the first thing i'm going to do is going to be adding the engine itself now for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to go ahead and use a diesel engine so we'll go ahead and add the diesel engine just towards the rear of the submarine once we have that done we'll start getting our piping done uh, now to start with i'm going to go ahead and do the propulsion so first off it's going to come out of the engine itself and then we want it to go into a gearbox which i'm going to add right now once you have the gearbox selected uh we'll go ahead and just use orange now once we place it down if it will let me place it down you can see now that it has arrows since the last update they have added arrows to it um, so that will tell you now which way it goes so obviously we don't want it to go that way we want it to go the other way um, so we'll see if we can go ahead and just change that orientation it's being very mean with me and not wanting me to place this down There we go. Got our place down. And then we can go ahead and just delete these extra blocks. Delete that. And then what we're going to do is just use a enclosed straight pipe here. Make sure we go ahead and just select our orange again for the pipes, just for the propulsion. And then we'll start running this all towards the rear. I'm just going to bring it up by one. And then bring it out here. Fantastic. Let's quickly go ahead and just add all these pipes quickly in just to get that done. We're going to go ahead and start just with one propeller to start with and then we'll see how that works. If we need to add more to get a little bit more power out of it, then we can obviously add as we go on. Uh, but for the tutorial is just to get it working and to get the whole theory done. So we've got that. We'll add our propeller onto the rear here. Double check that we have everything piped up. Perfect. Now you're probably thinking, well, Cameron, you haven't obviously added a um clutch i'm not going to for this video we can go ahead and add that in the next video or in a future video um at the moment just to get this engine working so once we have that done uh, we can go ahead and actually now start doing our front piping which is going to be the fuel the exhaust the air um so we'll go ahead and do that and along with the coolant so first off we're going to do is the air go ahead i'm going to select white for the air air is the top one just over here what we're going to do is we're going to bring this directly up and then just split it out into three so we grab some fluid ports now we might obviously we'll have to see when we submerge if we need to add a filter onto here to fill our filter out the water because what it might do is it might suck the water in um, i'm not 100 sure if it will do that or not 
once again, everything is about learning and figuring out for yourself. Uh, and that's the whole fun and joy about everything. So we'll go ahead, just add this here. Obviously, you can go and actually just uh, extend and make as many as many as you want. Um, so you could, in theory, add another one like that and just keep on using T pieces just around there. And then you can see at the top now we have two. You can add more uh, as you go on if you want to. But for the purpose story, I think four is more than enough. Uh, so next up, what we need to do is we need to actually add our fuel. Fuel, I'm just going to go select red uh, so you know where the blocks, where the pipes are just for uh, purpose sake. I'm just going to go ahead and use two of our large fluid tanks. The large fluid tanks, I think I'm just going to put them just towards the rear, which hopefully should fit in there perfectly. Yep, they have. Great. So once that's in there, we obviously just need to run the piping across to the engine itself. So with that done, we can just go ahead and delete a couple blocks. And then I'm just going to use some enclosed pipes just along here. First off, starting with an angled one. Great. And then just some straight pipes. Just going there. And then we can take that and bring it towards the engine itself. Go ahead, just grab our red color again and then start bringing our pipe. You can obviously drag this down and bring it all the way to here if you want to. It's not wanting me to do it. There we go. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to bring it either side. Now you could split it uh, evenly if you wanted to make it look a little better, um, but we don't need to. We just need to bring it to there. So what we can do is just run it across the engine, going across down and then up into there. So we can just do that. Disable our X plane. Now, obviously, you could, as I said, you could wire this however you want to wire it. Um, you could wire it underneath, across, down, up, or whatever you, whatever you fancy. Um, but for the story, I'm just going to be doing it right here. Once we have that, we can just go ahead and add our final power pieces. Now, one thing we do have to note is that we might have gone <clears throat> past the 10 block vertical limit. Uh, if you go remember, as, as I covered in one of the previous tutorials, uh, if you go higher than 10 blocks vertically with any of the pipes, uh, I think it only applies to the coolant and the fuel. If I'm correct, uh, you will need to go ahead and add a pipe to the system to get it to actually send stuff through. Um, so what we'll have to do here is just, just to be sure, we'll go ahead and just add a pipe down I mean, sorry, a pump down and then double check, obviously, that we got the orientation right. So the art is on this end, which is perfect. So it's going to suck in from the fuel tanks and then send it down into our engine itself. Great. So once we have that down, uh, we can now start doing our coolant system. Now, for the coolant system itself, um, I'm going to do something a little bit probably out of the norm, out of the normal. Um, I could be wrong, people, maybe other people have done it, um, but I haven't seen it yet. Pretty much what I'm going to be doing is to keep the engine cool, I'm going to be using uh, the heat sinks. And those heat sinks themselves, I'm actually going to put underneath the submarine. Um, so what we will do is we'll just go ahead, enable the X-Plane again, and delete a couple of these blocks, that should be enough. And then see if we can just place it right there and then in theory what it's going to do is take the hot coolant from the engine bring it through to the radiators and then see water itself is going to cool the radiators and then hopefully it's going to send cold water cold coolant straight back into the engine uh, obviously this is not a perfect science and I might be talking complete crap um, but we'll see and we'll soon find out if it does work or if it doesn't work so with that done, uh, let's go ahead and actually just connect our pipes. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't matter which orientation you put the um, the fluid A and fluid B. If I'm correct, um, that might change with a future update. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you can actually just <clears throat> connect any side to any side. So obviously it's going to come out of the engine, go down there, go through there, and it's then going to get going into the next radiator itself and then go back into the engine itself. So that's taken care of our coolant system. Uh, the remaining part of our piping for the engine itself is going to be the exhaust. Now for the exhaust itself, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot it off the bottom of the actual submarine. Um, 
I don't know if it's going to look nice or not, um, but I, that's my thought process at least about it, is using a pump to shoot it out quite far um, away from the submarine. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to actually just make a little mold or encasement for the actual pipe itself, uh, because we don't want it sticking out from our submarine. We want it kind of to be hidden in our submarine. And to do that, and obviously to have it all nice and sealed, we'll just go ahead and have to actually just add a couple more blocks here. So we'll go ahead, delete that, and then we're going to put our actual piece inside there. I'm going to top it off with just a enclosed straight pipe, as always, just to seal, seal the compartment off. And then you can see now we've got one on either side, which is great because we have two for the system. Go ahead, we'll just use black as always for our exhaust in the tutorials. Connect that all up. Bring it down there. And then we can just start now bringing this across and connecting it up. As I said earlier, I'm just going to add a pump to it. Uh, we were just adding the pump on just to obviously make sure that it's going to blow it straight down and not have any extra, uh, like a poor, poor volume coming through. Uh, so in order to that, just go ahead and create some extra space. And we can go ahead and just actually add our pumps on themselves. So once we have that done, just double check. Obviously, you got the orientation right. We want the out to be here, which is obviously the wrong way now. So we need to just go ahead and delete that. Double check, we got the out. Yep, perfect. So we got the out. So the exhaust is coming out, the engine going into those pumps, and then shooting down underneath the submarine, and which are where we can then go ahead and just add our exhausts. So you can see those exhausts now are actually completely hidden, uh, which should actually look quite nice. We'll then go ahead now and just add a couple extra control panels here so we can obviously control our engine itself. Um, we'll need a couple dials, uh, as always, fuel, temperature. Um, we also need rotations and then our battery. We're going to need a couple buttons. Uh, we'll need, first of all, a toggle button for our exhaust pumps, another toggle button for our fluid pump. We'll need a push button for our engine self. And then lastly, we're obviously going to need a throttle lever. And that will control the engines and how it works. And then lastly, to control the gearbox, I'm just going to put down a simple toggle button. Now, with that all done, what we're going to go ahead and just name all these up quickly. If you're a little confused on what I'm doing here, um, I have covered this in a tutorial on how to build a full engine uh, in advanced mode. So do go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll hopefully link it in the top right, hopefully. Uh, and that will pretty much tell you everything that you need to know about um, to building advanced engines here in advanced mode. So once we got that, uh, last thing we need to go and name for the dials will be the battery. As I said, toggle button for the fuel pump. Another toggle button for the exhaust pump. Starter button, which is a push button. Throttle lever. And then lastly, I said gearbox. So that all named, we'll go ahead now and we'll just make sure that we have everything all placed right. Um, and then one thing that we do need to do is just go ahead and select our gearbox. I'm gonna set it to one, two, three to start with and then reverse for our second gear. So by default, it'll be in a normal range and then second gear will be obviously be reverse. So with that done, we'll go ahead and just go ahead and quickly just connect all our power up and obviously all our data up. You can see here, I still have my x plane enabled. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that and then delete these extra blocks that I don't need. Once we have that done, uh, we can just go ahead and start connecting everything up. So with the electric, I like to start with that, get everything all done and connected, make sure we have obviously our fuel pumps, the engine itself, the gearbox, perfect. And if you always want to do a double check to see you have everything connected with electric, and if you only have one battery, you can just go ahead and hold it down and then you can see here that it's connected to everything, perfect. That's done, we can go ahead and connect our data. Um, first off, battery, obviously goes to battery. With rotations, connect it off to the rotations of the engine, temperature, temperature, fuel. Now, we obviously have two fuel tanks, so what we need to do is, because we have two outputs, only one input on this dial, we need to go ahead and actually just add 
an add an add component um, and get that connected quickly. So we send both the number outputs of the fuel tanks to the add. So it adds it together and then it's going to send it to our fuel dial. That done, uh, we're going to go ahead fuel pump. We're going to go ahead and connect that. So it turns it on. Next off is going to be the exhaust pumps. Turns that on. Great. Starter motor, which is going to be to start the engine itself. Throttle to control the throttle of the engine. As I said, there's no gearbox at the moment, so it will send power straight through. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and just put our gearbox switch there. So with that all connected, um, we'll go ahead and spawn this in and see if we can get the engine running and see if we can actually start going forward for the first time in the submarine itself. So one thing that I do need to add, and please remind me in the comments, everyone, to do it in the next video, is I need to add ladders to the side of the submarine, because as you can see here, it's quite difficult uh, to constantly jump and actually manage to get onto the submarine itself. Now you could just go here and hope for the best. <laughs> it's quite irritating to get on, on it. I will eventually get it. Can I go to the front? It'll be easier to get on our oil. Oh, in theory, it's meant to be good. A little bit easier. It's difficult because obviously it's bobbing up and down the water. Um, so if you don't time it right, it won't work. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll go ahead and open our hatch. I'm going to go ahead and close the hatch also because I'll show you how the um, ballast system is working at the moment. So we'll go ahead, turn our fuel pumps on. Great. Turn our exhaust pumps on, great. Give a little throttle to the engine. Start it up. Yeah, great, great. Rotation's great, battery good. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just double check to see if we're actually moving. You can see here that the exhaust is coming out, which is perfect. And we're slowly moving forward, which is fine. Obviously, we're not giving it a full throttle. So that's why we're not moving forward just yet. But everything seems to be working. Obviously, go ahead and hold this over to make sure it's working, diagnosing the engine. We're going to go ahead and give it a full throttle, see if we can get it to go a little bit faster. Now, you can see that's quite slow. I would expect that to be turning more. Um, so we'll leave that for the next video. But we can go ahead. You can see the engine's working, which is great. That was the purpose of the story. Let's get the engine working, get the propeller on. Uh, we'll go ahead and diagnose that propeller and see maybe it's probably the gearbox. Um, we'll have to double check the settings on that. And then what we'll do is while we're here, we'll just go ahead and just double check our ballast system and see how that's working. Uh, and then you can actually fully, firstly start to see how it's going to actually look um, as a submarine. You can see the exhaust fumes going straight down the bottom, which is great. It's hiding the exhaust fumes, so you won't be able to see it. Uh, and then we should slowly start to be diving. Obviously, when we add our control fins in the next video, it will be a little bit quicker where we can actually angle, angle the sub um, down to make it dive faster. Um, but this will be the first time we're actually moving and diving at the same time. And hopefully we should... Get completely submerged and as you can see there the engines have gone and cut off that's because we've taken the air away from the engine so we're going to have to obviously have a look at that also in a future video and see what the issue is with that um, but you can see now our tanks are completely full and most of the submarine is submerged which is great and I think that's a good place to end the video on for today uh, we'll catch you in the next one in part three uh, as I said earlier we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll start adding our fin, fin rudders uh, and start diagnosing some of these issues that we have uh, as always I hope you found this somewhat informative and useful as always uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe uh, just a quick update while I'm here is a lot I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys saying you want to see a discord server uh, from myself so I'm in the process of setting that up and getting it all working uh, along with the roles and so on and so forth for different people so if you're a sub you'll have a certain role and so on and so forth I'm not going to get into that in this video I'm hoping to have it ready for tomorrow uh, so in tomorrow's video I'll let you know about that so look out for that and then we'll go ahead and see you in the next one